5,413 bills are waiting to be considered by Ukrainian parliamentary committees. Experts suggest that the upcoming ninth convocation start its work by reducing the number. Minimum three to four thousand bills could be skipped. Since it takes time, the time of committees and the Vohovna Rada is used inefficiently. Some of the submitted bills aren't relevant or useful. According to experts, ensuring the work of the anti-corruption court should be among the first tasks on the agenda. The institution will be officially launched on September 5th, but it already has a lot of cases to consider. The workload could be reduced by adopting some legislative amendments. There is a bill which was submitted by the president, which limits the amount of these cases and sends the cases which are investigated by the National Anti-Corruption Bureau and the Specialized Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office to the Anti-Corruption Court. Without adopting additional legislation, more than 3,950 cases would have to be accepted. It's a lot for the number of judges that we have now. The Parliamentary Foreign Affairs Committee is responsible for cooperation with the UN, the European Council, NATO, the World Trade Organization and other international institutions. During its term of office, it has ratified free trade agreements with Canada and Israel and terminated the Russian-Ukrainian Friendship Treaty. MP Hanna Hopko believes that it's important for the new convocation to continue Ukraine's European course. Assertive foreign policy and the course for the European Union and NATO must continue, as well as the issues of national identity. We work with the Bundestag regarding Germany's historical responsibility before Ukraine and recognizing the Holodomor as a genocide. I hope that the next convocation will work in this direction. MP Oleksiy Ryabchin says that it's also important to develop the production of energy resources and at the same time work on the program of energy saving. The Verhovna Rada, for example, became one of the first parliaments in the world to ratify the Paris Climate Agreement. We made it so that electric cars are the cheapest in Ukraine, but we need to add to energy efficiency to reduce the use of foreign fuel, diesel, gas, and for this money to stay here in Ukraine. Some find it important to remember social bills, especially considering the number of service people returning from the front line. It's necessary to create multidisciplinary brigades, teams of doctors dealing with rehabilitation. For example, after surgeries, we need to engage health resorts with unique natural resources, which simply aren't used. Lawyer Edward Bahirov says it's also important to protect soldiers' rights. Unfortunately, Ukraine hasn't legally defined the status of military actions with Russia. But anyway, if the parliament ratifies the Rome Statute and Ukraine's claims in international military tribunals and courts, then their decisions, which will state that Ukrainian citizens, service people held captive by Russia, are prisoners of war, it will have legal force. Due to the lack of the market, and the moratorium on the sale of farmland since 2001, the Ukrainian economy annually loses 1% of GDP growth. This amounts to 22.5 billion US dollars. The programs of many parties include the promise to lift the ban on selling farmland. Therefore, experts believe it's likely to be done. There will be serious pressure on Ukraine from international financial organizations, mainly the IMF and the World Bank, because, as we remember, this issue has already been on the agenda of our relations with the IMF, but we didn't get round to dealing with it. I believe that in 2020, lifting the moratorium will be one of Ukraine's conditions for receiving tranches. The 8th Convocation of the Verkhovna Rada adopted 2,726 regulatory documents. Only 982 of them became laws. Reported by Oha Mikhailuk, UATV.